This is an E. Ingram parlor clock. Uh, it was made around 1880s, sometime between probably 1880, 1895, somewhere in that time frame. Um, I've got it kind of taken apart right now. Uh, they, it's not a real, uh, a rare clock. It's, it's a pretty clock. Um, not a real rare clock, but it is very special to me. And that is because it was owned, uh, by my, uh, great grandfather and great grandmother on my mother's side, or my, actually my father's mother's side of the family. Um, my understanding, and this is a word of mouth uh, in the in the story, that it was my uh, grandma, my grandma Wright, um, Grace Bell Wright, who um, had this clock, and uh, my father inherited it many many years ago because I remember this clock being in the house. I never remember this clock ever running. I remember it being in my dad's office. And uh, so I'm making this uh, during this time when we're sheltered in place, and I'm making this video. Um, I've had I've had this since probably middle of last year when my mother um, shipped it to me, and I uh, had other projects going on, and um, it's been sitting on my workbench. And I've just decided that while I've got the downtime, which I've already worked on a whole bunch of other clocks and watches, <clears throat> that I would focus on this one. And not only would I focus some time on this one, but I'm, I'm going to record it. Um, and I'm going to place it on either my Facebook or my YouTube and, um, mainly just to share with the family, because this is kind of a heritage, you know, right family heritage kind of thing. It's special to me because one, I love clocks so much and I can repair them. Uh, I remember this clock being in the family. And, uh, so I'm going to, uh, do a, a full uh, repair of the clock. It doesn't really, nothing's really broken on it. Um, I've already kind of gone through it briefly. Um, I started to clean the wood of the case um, down here. I've already oiled. I'm using, I took a, a denatured alcohol. That's what I use first. And I wipe it all down and it takes off a lot of the excess um, varnish. There were there were clumps of varnish and varnish that had actually faded away. And what it does is it dissolves that varnish and actually spreads it out really nice. Um, and gives kind of an even covering of it all around. It was really bad around the lid up here. It was a thick layer right in here like it just accumulated up there for some reason. And uh, so cleaned all that up. And now I'm going over it with this uh, Restore, this Howard's Restore finisher which is a light oak it's an oil with a light color in it light oak color in it uh, I'm going to go over that um, but uh, anyhow so this this is kind of a, uh, a heritage kind of video for me and for the Wright family uh, I just wanted to share this with everybody um, as this clock I hope will stay in the Wright family in the future and uh, we will uh, be passing it on. And I wanted to get it back into its original. I'm not going to strip it. I'm not doing anything different with it. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to bring it back to it. It's its original condition, um, or at least the way it was when I received it, as best as I can. Um, what I'm the things I'm doing here is really not called a restoration. It's just called, or it's just basically called a cleanup and a repair or a servicing. Um, I did part of this uh, already. Um, put a little bit of, put a little bit of this, uh, restore, um, on that side of it. And I'll show you here real quick, kind of what it looks like when I do this. And it's just an oil that goes in and I'm just using a rag and I'm rubbing it in there and then I'll wipe it all down. Try to get it down into those cracks. So a little bit of history, this wood, this, this, uh, design that you see, on this wood, um, this was not carved into the wood. This is not a carving. It was actually pressed, uh, steam pressed, uh, with a with a metal, um, like a metal stamp, basically. So it was stamped on. The wood was uh, steamed and was was made wet. They, I think they wet the wood or they steamed it somehow. Now this piece, this piece here on the front may have been glued on. 
um, and a because yeah, it was nailed, nailed on because there's a nail right here and there's a nail right there. So it's a second piece that was placed on there. But the rest of this design on this big piece of wood, and that probably that piece too, was stamped on. It was one big machine that would pressure pressure stamp the design into it. So it was not hand carved. Um, the the wood down here along the door is probably the same. It was done the same way. They mass produce these. Um, there's thousands and thousands of these cocks made. I mean, I don't know the exact numbers. I've seen in some of the some of the uh, documentation from factories that this was the 1880s was a kind of a peak for clock companies. 1870s through the 1890s was huge peak American industry uh, creating all the different. There was I think in uh, Bristol, Connecticut, or in that area, there were probably like ten different clock companies making clocks, and they were like right beside each other. Um, Connecticut, Massachusetts were like the clock meccas um, in the late 1800s. Um, that's where everything was being made. So there was a lot of stiff competition. A lot of them didn't last very long. Actually, the, the Ingram Company um, stayed uh, around pretty long until the 1950s. Um, 1953, I think, is when it finally went under or it was purchased by another company. So uh, they made they made watches also they make clocks lots of clocks and you'll 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 you can see them around. So um, that basically what it looks like when you put a little coat of oil on there. Uh, this door needs a little bit of repair on the glass the piece that holds the glass in. Um, there's another piece up here that's missing. On that I'm gonna have to replace and put a piece of wood in there and that's this is basically tack stripped in and stand to hold the hold the glass and there's a piece on the bottom's missing too so um I think the glass was actually I put it I tried to put it back in a little better it's still a little loose so I'm gonna have to do a little extra work on that um here's the gong it is a chime time and chime clock it also has an alarm and here is the alarm. So this alarm sits about right here. And there's a bell. I have the bell right here. The bell fits in here. Um, in the center of the clock, and I'll show you the movement in a minute, there's a little wire. And you can set it for an hour. Uh, it's not like super sophisticated, but you wind this up. I think I can do it one hand. You wind this up. It's got a little spring in it. And then there's a lever right here that a wire goes up to the clock. And when the clock hits a specific hour that you set, it releases this. And this thing just runs down. Uh, it could be if it wound all the way up. That thing could run for two or three minutes. Um, and it's a very loud bell. So it definitely will wake you up. <laughs> so you have to set it once a day or set it for a specific hour of the day. I think you might be able to, if you were good, to, to maybe adjust it for quarter hour, half hour. Uh, I'll show you on there how, how, what you have to turn. You'd have to do a little experimenting if you had it to get it exactly right. So, But basically, you set it to the hour, and then it, it rings and whatever. These are also known as kitchen clocks. Um, a lot of these were used in kitchens uh, on the wall, but they're also considered parlor clocks. Uh, so anyhow, that's that piece. This is the movement of the clock. And uh, you can kind of see right here. Clean it off. It says E. Ingram. That actually, the E stands for Elias Ingram. That uh, shows here a patent date uh, of uh, November of 1879. And so that's basically the patent date was when they were patented for this design of movement. They probably had several different designs, depending on whether the dial of the clock was on the front or whether it mounted on the, the back of the, the movement or if it mounted on the front of the movement. So a lot of wall clocks like this one, this one can be considered a wall clock. You can hang it on the wall too, uh, or parlor clocks. Some parlor clocks have the, the dial and the mounts go in the front. I have another Ingram right here that I, I'm working on that has it's it pretty much kind of pretty much the same movement, but it has mount on the front so that it can mount up to the, the the case from the front. So you see 
it kind of wants to take off on its own already <laughs> um just just there's some there's some tension still um in the spring here so before I go too much farther, if anybody is interested in doing something like this, and um, uh, I want to warn you about disassembling the movement uh, of any kind of a spring-loaded clock, there's a lot of energy in these metal springs. It look They look old, they look dirty, they look rusty, but wound up, as long as they're not broken and they're wound up, there's a lot of energy. If you were to take these bolts off, these nuts off these bolts right here, and start to separate this thing with those with those um, uh, springs wound as tight as they even even not even fully wound even if it's just halfway wound this will just explode it, it'll it'll the, the pressure behind this thing will just pop everything out and could you could lose a finger could lose an eye you could you know rip your nose off I've heard all kinds of horror stories about guys that have uh, you know gotten kind of confident about it so when I do this there's a couple of things we're gonna do. Um, a little bit later here as I finish talking, but I wear gloves. Um, I wear a pair of these mechanics gloves when I do it because I've had my fingers whacked so many times by things flying out of here. Uh, sometimes it gets away from you when you're trying to, uh, you know, uh, take the take the pressure out of the out of the um, spring. And uh, let me get my ring. So what we're gonna do in order to help us do that. We take this this uh, locking ring, and the locking ring then goes around around the spring. I'll turn on this side; you can see it better. It goes around the spring, and then we we let the spring down, and it fills the inside of this ring. And the pressure then is held inside this ring, and it releases the pressure from all the gears uh, when it's inside this ring. And then we can take it all out. This one I might be able to do now. Uh, some of me have to wind down a little bit so there it's, it's in there loose but what we're going to do is I'll wind it down and um, you'll see how that works by the way this is the back side of the clock <laughs> these are the mounting bracket brackets that hold it to the case so we've got that in there and that's by the way what I just kicked was the chime side and it's taken off and I also let that loose so we lock that up all right, let it do its thing and stop. All right, so I'm going to use a, a tool. It's basically a clock key. Uh, it's got a it's got a different sizes on each end. It fits on it fits onto the arbor uh, for wind like you would wind a clock. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wind it down. So first I'm going to put a glove on because this is on at least one hand. And see if I can do this without blocking your view. I don't know if I can or not. So there's a little, uh, it's called the click spring. That's right here. And I go ahead and really zoom really far. I'm gonna have to be able to show you here. This little thing right here is a catch. See, it's locking the spring from unwinding. So when you wind a clock and you hear it, click, 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 that's what's doing it. So I'll do it real quick. I'll wind it for you. I don't know if you can see it. It's hard to see. Let me go back out a little bit. Maybe lift it up at an angle. So as I wind it, you see it's, you see it grabs. So what I want to do is unwind it. In order to unwind it, I have to hold, I have to hold that, that lock away. I have to pull it out and hold it away. And I'm going to use, I'm going to use a, a, a screwdriver to do that. At the same time, I'm going to hold this thing. And that's why this has a handle on it, because the pressure is going to go into this winder. And I release it a little bit, and then I just let it spin in my hands. And I'm just going to let it wind down. And that's taken off. Hold on a second. Let me lock that down again. I should have done that one first, but i got to wind it. I gotta find another ring actually. I didn't have my other ring sitting out here. So so now what has happened is you can see this ring now holds the spring inside of it. So it's expanded as far as it can go. It's expanded out and now it's inside of inside this ring. 
So it is basically loose in here. You can see I can move it now. There's no pressure going into the chime side of the clock. Um, it's just unwound into there. Now I'm going to do the same thing on this side. So uh, I have to bring this spring down to within the size to put this ring around it. So I have to wind the clock basically. So I'm going to have to wind the spring. I'm going to use this uh, downwinder tool and get it to where it looks like it might go a little bit more. Okay. And there it is. Right, right here. Spark. Okay, so we're going to stick the ring on here. And it's right in place. Flip it over. Let's get it around here so I can see the clip. Kind of hold it with this hand. I got to hold that. It's kind of loose. Can let it down a little slower, and then when it gets just taut, then I can adjust it. So I'm going to use. So I'm going to have to use my left hand this time. There we go. So that. Release down, and there we go. <clears throat> so all of the springs are now locked into place. The spring is really gunky. Um, I mean, it's thick gunky. It's like grease was used. And a lot of times it could be grease. Um, I mean, it, it, it grease is not what you use in a clock spring. You do you can put a light clock grease in there, and I, I usually do when I when I put new, when I put the springs back in, I'll clean them and put them back in with a little light grease. But even after time, people would put just regular oil in there, all kinds of different oils, and they, they get dirt in them, and then they get sticky and gunky, and you can see it's really nasty in there. There's some black gunk inside of all this. Even the even the gears have got have picked up a bunch of dirt. Um, there were a lot of, uh, uh, over the years too, if it was in a, sm a smoking house, uh, somebody that smoked, you think about these back in the 1880s, you know, people were smoking cigars and pipes and everything else in the house and the nicotine gets in these things. I have opened up a mini o'clock that just reeked of cigarette smoke <laughs> and they were all yellow. Everything was yellow and kind of gunky. So, so a little bit more about the this movement this piece right here i was telling you about the alarm that's what this piece is right here and the way this works is there's a little notch there'll be a wire coming down from here and it goes down to that alarm and it rides on a little rail kind of on the back side of this little dial so as as the as the time comes around it drops so when it drops and it releases so what you do is you'd line you'd line up with the the dial of the clock you line up this to the 12 to whatever hour you wanted and then it would drop down and it would set the alarm off and so this is just basically pressed on so we're going to pull that off and there's the notch that it drops down into when you turn it and this is all one piece of brass this is all brass and as i pull these things off i stick them in this basket um this is my uh, cleaning basket so everything that goes in this basket is going to go into an ultrasonic cleaner and we're going to clean all these pieces um, this is part of the escapement and that's all in pretty good condition so i'm going to throw that in there and then um, the suspension spring which is what this is which i will reuse i will clean it up i'm actually going to put it in the basket um, this little pin holds that uh, escapement catch on there so I'm just gonna put it back there so it doesn't flop around and uh, this I'm just gonna leave on here and everything is down let me just make sure this is down this looks like it's got a little pressure in it still so pull that and kind of 
force it down. I want to make sure all the pressure is in those rings and not in anything. Yeah, that's loose there. And not really in anything in the cock or inside the gears or anything. So there we go. So this is just the beginning. So taking this apart, one of the things that um, uh, if you do this, and I do it, uh, in the beginning, in the old days, they would um, draw, do a drawing of everything. They would do a drawing of where the parts were because there's a time side. This is the time over here. This runs the time. These gears that are all kind of lined up here with this. Everything down on this side is the chime. So this is the chime, the, the strike wheel tells the number of hours, whatever the hour is and everything. So that's it's divided basically into half and then two sides. And as I go through here, I'm going to mark each one of the parts too. Um, but I also take pictures of it since now I have a video. Um, I can, there's some things that I, I it's hard to see these wires. Uh, when we look at the wires and where they attach back again, how they go, what they go under, what they go over, uh, things like that we want to mark and we want to kind of take a picture of it and then I can zoom in on a, on a digital picture. It's much easier to see the way it was originally before you took it apart to know how it goes back together again. These are all pretty standard. I'm pretty used to how these go back together and what the parts are. So I don't need as many pictures as I used to. When I first started doing this, I was taking a lot of pictures. Uh, now I usually take about five pictures from different sides and um, that gives me enough to go on uh, when we get going there. So, all right. So uh, with everything taken down and loose and there's no pressure on anything here, we'll start taking it apart. <clears throat> so I'm going to go into uh, just a little, I can take my gloves off now. I take these little nuts off. Um, I always have a, I always keep a, I buy these little Tupperware boxes. I have different sizes and when I when I start doing throwing parts in there like that one of the things I will do is I have another I have another box here I write Ingram the the right family clock for example and I'll stick it in uh, stick it in the box with it and uh, then I know what's what's in there <laughs> because I have uh, many projects going on at once sometimes in the uh, yeah, I, uh, I don't want to lose any parts. So far, I am pretty good about not doing that, but you never know. When you start having lots of parts all over the place, it's hard to track. All right. So, <clears throat> got all the got all the nuts off of here. There were five of them. So now I'm going to lift the, lift the, the front uh, face or the front part of the plate front plate off now here's where I like to just lift it straight up some parts are gonna roll a little bit I want to try to just go straight up and kind of expose just the inner guts like that and at this point I just make sure I take a quick look at where everything was before I knocked them out here they are here and these are the way the gears are gonna go back in there again and they are really dirty. This is mostly grime. It doesn't look rusty or nothing looks bent. Um, it's just kind of a grimy, you know, uh, I don't know how long it's been sitting. I know I've been sitting in mom and dad's house in Mexico for, you know, 40 years, I have 50 years actually coming up um, in August. So, um, you know, I remember seeing it in this in our house in Ohio. So yeah, it's been, uh, it has um, never been serviced in all those years, so we're going to get it going again. I'm kind of excited about this. So uh, here you go. So what I would do, uh, normally what I do is I would take a photograph of this, which I might be able to do while I am videoing this, actually. I'm just going to do a little close-up video of it, and that way I can use it later if I need to. And uh, the, the part that always gets me is these wires right here. Um, they're the lifting wires for the chime. Um, there's like three wire, three uh, pieces sticking out of this. Um, and they go up under and over and whatever. And, uh, it's kind of a, <laughs> it's, it's kind of a, 
you, you know, you got to look at them when you put them in there. They're hard to get back in, first of all, but to get them into the right place, they're not touching the wrong thing or jammed in there. So uh, at this point, what I need to do is get my screwdriver. So I'm going to take the the escapement wheel, the verge wheel out of here. That's this piece right here. And it just is kind of pressure. Uh, there, It's in between of there. So just a little bit of lift. You can bend it up a little bit and I can get that out of there. A little bending. Just get it out, get the pivot out of the bushing. Yeah, I'm gonna take this off for now. And we'll take the verge out of there. This is kind of a unique wheel. It's got really thin, sharp teeth that are angled on it. Um, and they can see this is real dirty. So that's going in the cleaner. And uh, I will then take off the, uh, I will take the uh, count wheel off. And I'll try to do it here on the side. There's a little hole in this little, little U-shaped clip holds it in. So once I get that in there, push that through. Push that all the way through, pull that up. So this metal clip, uh, I won't put this in the washer because it's too small. I'm afraid I'll lose it, um, but the, but this will go in there. There's a little corrosion on on this too, so it looks like it gotten, it maybe got a little damp or corrosion because of the oil or grease buildup and then it, then it corrodes that oil. It starts eating away at the metal. So I'll throw that in there. And this plate is pretty much done, this front plate. And there you can see, I don't know if I uh, gave you a good look at the, uh, gave you a good look at the in mark on here, but it says uh, E. Ingram Company. This is patent October. Uh, it was pat it was two patents on this clock. It was one in October 1878 and one in uh, October the October the 8th is 1878, and November the 11th, um, 1879. And pretty much all of the Ingram clocks have those. So that must have been their original patent design for this. Doesn't mean that's when it was made, but it gives you a good idea that this clock was made sometime after those dates. So if you ever see other patents on clocks and stuff, I'll tell you that a little bit too. Uh, okay, so piece by piece now, I'll start pulling these pieces out. And this is the uh, Arbor, main Arbor. And winding there, that's pretty recognizable and that's easy to go back together. Um, I will probably go ahead and take this bad boy out. And that's part of the time time gear. Then what I'll do here is um, let's kind of go. So this these are these four these four gears are the main ones for the time side. So what I like to do is because they look so close, like this these look how close they look. They're almost the same, and these these look the same too. And I don't want to. Don't want to like you know get them swapped out because they're made decisionally to have the right number of teeth and everything to do the right thing. So what I'm going to do from this perspective is I'm going to take the corner. I'm going to etch in a T. I'm going to scratch in T1 because this is the time side in gear one. And then I'm going to go to this one and I'm going to call this one. I can do it more down here on the arm. I'm going to call it T T2. So I'm going to pull that one out because I already know. Oh, little, little little bling there. <laughs> They'll let go of the, of the gear. So the next one we'll do is this one. This we took out. We took out uh, T2. It touches this gear, so that makes this one T3. And I will scratch on here T3. Real tiny. Drop that in a basket. And then this one's going to be T4. And we'll go T4. Put it about right here. Okay. So there we go. And then I can take this one out. This one's a little... These things get a little tricky because you have to... I'm going to go ahead and take the, the striking... The striking wire out. That's what for for uh, it's gonna what hits the uh, the gong that goes in the washer. And I'm gonna lift. It's the the end of the spring is on this post right here. That's what holds it down. 
One thing to remember too is the direction that the springs come around. That helps you when you put the spring back on. So I know that when I clean these springs, they're going to be separated. I could put on here, which I probably will, T1, but I, you need to know which way it goes on. You don't want it to come around this way because it won't fit because of the post here and stuff. So it's got to be the right direction. So what I'll do down here on the spring is I'll put, I'll just put T. Put a T right there. This is steel, so it's really hard. So it's hard to scratch in there. The brass is easier to... So now comes the fun part. We got one side apart. We'll follow the same process on the second side. And so I won't bore you with all of that. But what we'll do next is we need to take this, this off. This is really corroded. This is really greasy. So we need to take the spring off. Now there's a what there is is there's a notch in that arbor and then there's a hole in the spring and that notch is sticking through that hole in the spring. So it's kind of grabbing it. So we have to separate it a little bit um, to get it to get it apart. Now one thing I do because I have learned this is uh, I put my glove on because I have pushed down on there. I have pushed down on there with. Uh, screwdriver and gone through it and went into my fingers or my hands or whatever so as I'm trying to get this thing out so I'm going to try to separate just enough and there's a lot of gunk in there if I can separate it usually it doesn't take too much to separate it I just give it a little tug and it puts a nice space in there Okay, a little twist, and boom, there you go. So yeah, there's this little notch, a uh, little post that sticks out, like a pin that sticks out and goes through the hole. So this is, we're going to set this aside. I, I don't put these in my cleaner the first run uh, because there's so much gunk in there. I don't want all that stuff in my in my cleaner, but I will put this in my cleaner. Um, some of these I will wipe down uh, a little bit. It's a little loose. It's interesting. Press that back on, maybe. Uh, okay. And uh, I'm going to go through and do the exact same thing on everything on this side. And let me get right spring out of here. And the arbor. And pull the arbor out of there. And uh, then we've got the back panel, or back plate <coughs> of the clock which is really dirty. So it'll be, uh, it'll be interesting to see how this cleans up. Sometimes the brass and the, the stuff I use, um, it's not a brass cleaner. It's a, an ultrasonic, and I'll talk more about it. I'm going to end this part of the video uh, now. I'm going to have a second part, and we're going to talk more about uh, the cleaning process, chemicals, and the mix, and all that kind of stuff, and actually go through and uh, clean this. All right. See you again.